So, we are all Africans. I know our president is a loud tribesman. <laughs> Why, why are we all Africans? You don't have to go back very far, only about 100,000 years, and all our ancestors lived in Africa, were African, and walked out of Africa not that long ago. So we are African, actually we're African apes. We're all African apes, uh, and somehow brings us all together, don't you think? We're apes with a shave. Yeah, yeah exactly right, yes. But Christine O'Donnell, uh, who I showed the clip of last week, said that uh, she does not believe in evolution, believes it's a myth, because she said, how come we don't see apes evolving now? Why don't you go to the zoo and see the monkey evolving, you know, before our eyes? I, I know this is what they call a softball here in America, but for those that who is, don't... You know. That is spectacularly stupid, and <laughs> it's not... It's I not, love the British, the way they can get away it, with it. It's that. not just that it, that it suggests that she thinks that monkeys turn into, into humans overnight, but right. um, it's, it's also the fact that monkeys are very good doing what they do. They, they live up trees, and it's a very good thing to be a monkey if you're up a tree. You might as well say, why aren't humans turning into monkeys? Because we have a common ancestor with monkeys, which lived right. about 20 million years ago, and we've both been evolving ever since. That's as simple as that. What about throwing the pool? <laughs> well, well I, is that... I've, I've known that to happen, if not in real humans, at least in human cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> but that does seem to suggest that the monkeys um, are more uh, primitive, uh, more interested. Well, pri pri uh, more... primitive means, pri primitive means more like ancestor. And so if, you, if we looked at the common ancestor of humans, and it's up there, and then we, right. we come down. Um, that common ancestor would have looked much more like a monkey than it looks like a human. So we probably would have called it a monkey, yes. And, and the people who say evolution, you know, not real because we can't see it, this kind of stuff. I, in your book, which is marvelous, interesting, even to the layman, which is what I am, the layman, if I could appreciate it, anyone can, because I'm not a science person. Um, I, you talk about, for example, the fact that lizards, even in our lifetime, were moved to an island, right? Yeah. Where they never were before. And we saw it in just a matter of decades. That's right. I mean, most of evolution happened before we were born and took much too long for us to see. But there are just a few examples, and these lizards is one. They were moved from one island in the Mediterranean to another. And within a couple of decades, they had evolved a completely new diet, and that had, that had changed their jaws, even changed their stomachs, and they now got stomach valves. In just a couple of decades, just think what could be achieved in a million years, a hundred million years. So when, when people say the Bible is real, what they're really saying is that ancient people somehow have more knowledge of it, somehow more wiser. That, that's silly, right? Because wisdom develops on the shoulders of other people. I mean, there, there could be no Einstein without Newton. There no, could that's be right. No, right? Yeah. And we're not even talking about the ancient Greeks, and we're, we're, we're talking about a tribe of wandering Middle Eastern herdsmen. I mean, why would they have any wisdom about the origin of the world or the origin of anything else? That particular myth is the myth that just by sheer chance, the Judeo-Christian myth, happens to have come to our civilization. There are thousands of myths in the world. None of them are any better than any of the others. Some of them are a lot more poetic than that one. Uh, right. But that's all you can say. And, and you have a, a campaign, I know, that I saw you speak on YouTube uh, very eloquently about this out campaign. Oh, the out campaign. Was it even written on, on the right. T-shirt? Which, by the way, you can get from richarddawkins.net. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And you also look up... Look you're not up, so evolved that you're above up. a plug. I know, I know, I know. Sorry about that. Um, the, and the out campaign is, is there too. The out campaign, it's partly come out as an atheist. Don't be afraid to come out. It's not... Uh, but we're not in the business of outing people. Um, people may out themselves, and all we do is encourage them. Um, keep out, keep religion out of, out of schools, keep religion out of politics. Um, you, I, I want to hear your answer to the people, because I saw you speak about this, who say, well, you know, atheists are responsible for really all the horrible things that have happened in the last century, because Hitler and Stalin and Mao were all atheists, and look what they did. Hitler was a Roman Catholic, and even if he wasn't, which he was, uh, even if he wasn't, his soldiers, his foot soldiers, those right. who actually did the horrible things, were either Catholic or Lutheran, and they had been schooled for centuries to hate Jews. Both Catholics and Lutherans had been trained 
to believe that Jews were responsible for killing Jesus. So Hitler had a ripe field to plow there in, in the Christian heritage of Germany. But could I add something to that? Because I've thought about this, I've been confronted this with myself many times, which is that I think people get hung up on the word religion. Hitlerism, Stalinism, Maoism were state religions. They were religions, of course. And they Hirohito were. Yep. in Japan yes. was was a godlike figure. Yeah. Any the real uh, the crux of it is that any time that people give up on logic and put their faith in someone, uh, Kim Jong Il yeah. in uh, North Korea, yeah. Yeah. the mythology around him. They said yes. that uh, he the first time he played golf, he had eleven holes in one. Yes. <laughs> <That's right>. Yes. <laughs> Um, that's religion. That's right. And, and um, the, the point is that there is no logical pathway that would lead you from atheism to do those terrible things. Right. There is a logical pathway that would lead to either, that would lead to that either from a, a Christian religion or something like that, or from one of these state religions like Nazism, like Stalinism and so on. You really can justify doing those awful things if you believe something as strongly as religious people do. But nobody's going to go and kill for the sake of atheism. Why on earth would you? Right. Yeah. In, in, in France this week, they, they passed a law uh, that you cannot wear the burqa. Now, I know you feel, as I do, it doesn't really matter what you wear. But just speak a little about the, what goes on in the schools of... Uh... Right. I mean, I think, there, as you imply, there are much worse things than the clothes you, you wear. A couple of months ago, I visited a British Islamic school, one of the best in the country, uh, and the headmaster was a leading, a leading Muslim in Britain. And I spoke to about six of the girls. Only the, the girls and boys are kept strictly se separate, of course. Um, and I learned that every single pupil in that school did not believe in evolution. And the pupils that I spoke to quite clearly think that the Quran is a superior source of scientific information than evidence. And they told me, for example, that salt water and fresh water don't mix. The reason? Because it says that in the Quran. Now, alas, I lack the presence of mind to turn to the teacher sitting next to me and say, will you please at the very next science lesson, get some salt water, get some fresh water, and mix them and see what happens. But, well, and, and my guess is that even if she did that, even if she did that, uh, and sure enough, they, they would mix, they still would believe the Quran because the Quran takes precedence over fact, evidence. Whether, whether water...